When you talk about environment, some of us must have seen an open land with plants, grass, flowers and butterflies and suddenly one day people must have come there and destroyed all those and would have started building apartments or housing complexes. So here you can see in the beginning when it was a land fresh and natural that is our environment and even after it was destroyed and buildings have come even after that also it is our environment. So in both the cases that place is our environment because because we are living in that surroundings so around any living organism the place the people or other organisms or other living beings then things and the natural settings so all these make an environment we can say environment is a combination of both natural and man-made phenomena that is things so when we speak about natural environment it means both biotic and abiotic so here biotic and abiotic both are natural conditions that is they are not man-made but natural so biotic will be all living organisms including plants and animals at the same time abiotic that is also natural which are non-living elements all natural non-living elements like land air water air pressure heat like that everything which is around you that is natural so these are abiotic and the human environment that is the human activities creations and interactions among human beings so this will include whatever humans build like buildings, apartments, housing complexes, parks, then bridges, roads, then temples, mosques, churches and also factories and industries. So these are all human made and also your activities. What we do in our house like a family, inside a family whatever happens then uh, when you go to a church, a temple or a mosque you pray to God. So those activities, then you go to school, college, you learn, you talk to your teacher, your friends, you play and also the economic activities like you go to a bank, get money, you go to shopping, you buy things Then also the political environment or political situation of human beings like elections, voting, campaigns, all these things. So these all make the human environment. So environment is nothing but a place which supports a life. There, any life, including human beings, we get the air to breathe then the water to drink, food to eat and also a place to live. So these are all available for all living beings including human beings in an environment. And how do we modify this environment? How do human beings modify a natural environment? So from our car, bike or bus we have pollution. So we pollute the air and for water we use bottles, plastic bottles and food. We manufacture various plates, utensils and on land we build factories. So here you can see for cars, bikes, we manufacture it. For it, manufacturing units are required. Then mills, mostly for our food products. For rice, because rice doesn't come directly from the farm. It has to go to a mill and from there it comes to you as rice. So for rice, then for sugar, like that, for many food products, you need mill and manufacturing units. Then factories to manufacture many uh, things which we use daily like mobile phones, TV, fridge, AC, all those stuffs. Like that, for many of our needs, we modify the natural environment. So in this chapter, we are going to see how our natural environment is and how we modify it in a brief manner. In a natural environment, you will be having land, water, air, plants and animals. In a previous chapter, you must have learnt about lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere. So these are all part of natural environment. Here we will learn some more facts about these domains. So first we will see lithosphere. So if you have a rubber ball, the outermost layer, that is the rubber, outermost rubber, that is the crust. Like that if you have a coconut, the outer layer, so that is the crust. So like that, the earth's crust, the solid outer part, that is called the earth's crust and that is the lithosphere. It is made up of rocks and minerals and also soil. So the earth's outer part will be irregular, that is the lithosphere will be irregular including the surface which contains many types of landforms. So these landforms will include mountains, plateaus, plains, then valleys and it is found in continents, islands and also on the ocean flows or the ocean bed. So here the ocean is not included in lithosphere but the ocean bed alone so the bed will contain rocks, soil and all no. So those part alone will form lithosphere and not the water. We can see that the lithosphere contains forests then uh, grasslands for grazing then land for doing agriculture and also land or uh, place where humans can live. We also have huge source of minerals like iron, gold and many minerals on the lithosphere. Next we will see hydrosphere. So all the water bodies, the domain of water, that is the hydrosphere. So it will include 
different sources of water like rivers, lakes, seas, oceans, streams. So these are all very important for all living organisms, including human beings, because even we require water. Next is atmosphere. Surrounding our earth, there is a thin layer of air. So this layer of air is called the atmosphere. And you must know, since it's very thin and light, it can escape. But the atmosphere does not escape from the earth because of the gravitational force of earth. The gravitational force of earth pulls the atmosphere and has it over the earth's surface. So this layer of air, that is the atmosphere, it protects us from the harmful rays of the sun and also from the intense heat of the sun. And also the atmosphere contains many number of gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, etc. And also dust, then water vapor. When there is a change in the atmosphere, it also changes the weather and the climate. So you can see rain, then snow, heat, many things. Even the atmosphere is a reason for it. There is a change in the atmosphere is a reason for it. Next is the biosphere. All the plant and animal kingdom, that is all the plants and animals, they are inside the biosphere. So this is the place where these plants and animals, also humans, they interact with the land, water and air. So if in a place, if there is a bird, it sometimes eats fishes. So the fish lives in water. In water, you have oxygen and the oxygen also comes from the air. So such a place is a biosphere. So on earth, there are n number of places where the living things interact with land, water and air. And all these places, all these places on earth together comprise the biosphere. In a country, we must have noticed in different places, the weather, climate will be different. And also the environment, even the environment also will be different. For example, in Kerala, you may have seen many green fields and areas, including coconut plantations, coconut trees. But at the same time in Jaisalmer, there will be no rain and it will be very dry. And you can see a lot of sand and dust. And in Kerala, you would have seen elephants. In forest, you can see deer and other animals. But in Jaisalmer, you can find snakes, lizards and also insects. So here in two different places, there are two types of vegetations, two types of physical features. So all animals, plants and also human beings, they depend on the surroundings that is around them, things around them. And sometimes they will also be dependent on each other. So plants will be dependent on human beings because see in fields, what we will do, we will grow the crops, we will give fertilizers, we will give water to the plants. At the same time, we eat them. So we give them food they also give us food. Like how we grow trees, we get fruits and sometimes from plants we get vegetables. So there is an interaction between plants and human beings. This also goes to plants and birds, then fish and river water and human beings and uh, the physical features like land, soil, water, everything. So here we can see there is a relation between living organisms and there is also a relationship between the organisms that is like human beings, birds, fishes, animals with their surroundings like land, water, air, forest everything. So this is called an ecosystem. So it is a system where there is an interaction between living beings among each other and also with other physical features like we saw land, water, etc. and also chemical factors like we have uh, minerals, then carbon, oxygen, etc. And these are all linked by transfer of energy and material. So material includes like uh, fruits and vegetables, then food, fertilizers, then energy includes the energy inside the food or inside the fertilizer. So there is a transfer of energy and material also. So this type of a system is called an ecosystem. So it will include a rainforest, then grasslands, desert, mountains, lake, river, ocean, and also a small pond. So in a pond there will be fish, the fish will require water, there is water and also there will be an interaction with the air because oxygen is from the air, then soil, then humans will eat the fish, even birds, then uh, around the uh, pond or the water body there will be forest, so there will be animals. So this is an ecosystem. Some may have a confusion between biosphere and ecosystem. So a biosphere is also an interaction between all the systems. Same way you can ask even ecosystem is similar, no? So what I'll say is biosphere it's a collection of all the ecosystems. In general, you use a term called biosphere to all the systems, all the ecosystems. But individually, there will be different ecosystems in different places. That is how we have to understand. So in this chapter, we learned how human beings interact with the environment for their needs and also they modify the environment. During the early period, that is thousands of years back, the early men, the early human beings, when they were living on earth, what they did was they adapted to the environment, to the natural surroundings. They were leading a simple life. They were in the forest, eating the fruits and whatever was available in the forest, in the nature. Those things they used and they lived. Then as time grew, what happened? 
the needs the requirements of human beings started to increase and also it varied that is in different places there were different needs different people had different needs and humans started to use the environment and also change the environment for their needs what they did was they started growing crops farming was introduced then they domesticated animals so by these two ways they started to have a settled life this is how early villages were formed that is humans started to live in a place by growing crops and domesticating animals so humans got food from the crops and also from animals then the invention of wheel came because of this transportation started to become easy and also it gave way to production of new products in that pot was one of the early products that was manufactured or produced by human beings when wheel was invented then as you saw farming and domestication of animals this gave rise to increased food production this gave way to barter system barter system is nothing but exchange of goods without any money nowadays we use money to buy things those days if someone wants a goat they will give two bags of rice and get that goat so here exchange of goods is there rice for goat like that so as barter system started to increase exchange of goods started to increase trade developed commerce developed this was for a long period then came a major change that is industrial revolution around the 18th century so here humans started to build machines and also to increase production they started to manufacture many goods which also included goods for transportation so transportation became faster including transportation of goods and human beings then came the information age the information revolution we are living in a information age where communication is faster easier across the world so our needs our requirements have increased we want information we want to watch a program we want to download something we want to communicate we want to talk we want to send message we want to learn something including the video which you are watching now so for everything you depend on technology information communication to put it together for our own needs we are dependent on the environment so we use the environment for all our needs we manufacture mobile phones televisions cars aeroplanes etc for our own needs we may ask should we have all these technology should we go back to live like an early man but that may not be possible for many of us for example in summer it will be very hot and we eat a watermelon or something chill at the same time when it is winter we eat something which is hot or a, a hot roasted peanuts so here we balance ourselves in different stages of time similarly we should also balance the environment so when we take something from the environment from the nature we should balance it we use a lot of things from the environment we take a lot of things from the environment from our nature we should replace it we should balance it only when there is a balance between our need our requirement or take away from the environment and the environment itself the nature itself we can have a harmless way of life on earth continue to register your comments thanks for watching and supporting my channel